Okay, so the next topic I would like to talk about are set relations. And, well, what are relations? You know, when we're talking about numbers, we have a bunch of uh, different sorts of relations that we look at a lot of the time. These are, uh, well, what, what is a relation in general? It compares uh, to, you know, so, you know, sets, sets, numbers, uh, elements, whatever. And so for numbers, we have, you know, equal, less than, less, uh, not equal, less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, etc. Things like that. These are relations because they compare to numbers and they say something about whether they're the same, you know, they're different, one is bigger, you know, one is smaller, or less than or equal to, greater, greater than or equal to, etc. Well, for sets, we have some similar things that correspond to all of these things. In fact, we're really going to be looking at things that, you know, most look like, um, you know, these three, in a sense. So for sets, what are the different sets relations that we have? The first kind we have is subset. And we said that A is a subset of B. And we write this as A, and we use this little sign right here, B. Uh, so it's like a, a U to the side of B. If every element of A is an element of B. So you know, let's look at some examples of this. You know, how do I actually go about showing that, uh, you know, what, you know, something is a subset? Well, let's look at an example using the roster method. Let's take V to be the vowels, which are A, E, I, O, U, and Y. And let's take L to be all letters. I know my alphabet. Great. How can I tell that V is a subset of L? Well, I mean, I know that all vowels are letters, but you know what I can do is I can take each element of V, look through the elements of L, and find it in there. I look for A, here it is. I look for E. Here it is. I look for I. There it is. I look for O. There it is. U's there. Y's there. Great. Um, how about set builder notation? Uh, let's take uh, E to be the set 2x, uh, x where x is a whole number. And I'm going to take uh, N to be x such so that x is a whole number. Okay. Well, E is a subset of N because whenever I take an element of E and check it against the condition uh, in N, it satisfies it. What do I mean? Well, I mean if uh, a, an element of E looks like 2x where x is a whole number. Now, when I multiply two whole numbers, and two is a whole number, I get another whole number. So 2x is a whole number, and thus it satisfies the property of being an n, so it is an n. So that's how I can show that E is a subset of N. I just say, okay, anybody who is an E satisfies what it means to be inside of N, so therefore it is a subset of N. Great. Um, how about something that is not a subset? Well, we can use A is not a subset of B if, well, it's not a subset of B. But uh, we can denote this by the... Uh, notation like this, A not subset B. Okay, this little thing right here. It's kind of like saying A is not equal to B, but A is not a subset of B. So for example here, let P be prime numbers, which are the numbers 2, 3, 5, 7, 
uh, 11, 13, 17, 19, etc. And we could write this in set builder notation x such that x is a whole number uh, which is greater than 1 and not divisible by anybody but 1 and itself. You might think that 1 is a prime number, but it makes more sense for it not to be. And n again is going to be the whole numbers. And, excuse me, uh, let's take n to be the odd numbers. Um, a way to define this is x such that x is not divisible by 2. So let me write O for odd numbers. Okay, well why is P not a subset of O? Because I can find an element in P which is not in O, because 2 is in P and is not in O. Um, you know, conversely, O is not a subset of P because, say, you know, what is, what is, a, what is an odd number which is not a prime number? Uh, 9 is 3 times 3 is odd but not prime. So, uh, so 9 is in O but not in P. So these are two sets which, you know, really don't have much to do with each other. Well, I mean, most prime numbers are odd, so actually, yes, the prime numbers have a lot to do with the odd numbers, but anyways. Um, let's make a couple of notes. Now, the first note I would like to make is that the empty set is the subset of uh, any set A. Why? Well, because there are no elements in here. So, you know, from a logic standpoint, if I'm checking that every element of the empty set is in here, well, yes, every element of the empty set is in A because there's nothing even to check. Um, but, you know, really, another way of thinking of it is I can get all the subsets of A by just taking away elements that are inside of A, and if I take everything out of A, then I'm just left with the empty set. Also, any set is a subset of itself, because if you look at the definition of subset, it just says that one set is a subset of another if the first set, uh, everything in the first set is in the second. A contains everything that's in A, so great. Um, great, so anyways. Uh, so let's just do another example. Let's find all subsets of A, B, C. Well, first of all, A, B, C itself is a subset of itself because of what we just said. Now, there are only three guys in A, B, C, so any subset is going to have to have less than three guys. A, B, C has all three of the guys, so let's see which ones have two elements. We can have A and B and get rid of C. We can get rid of B and just have A and C. Or we can get rid of A and just have B and C. Now, those are all the possible ways of having two elements, so then the next kind of subsets will be one element. So we can call these uh, singleton sets, um, because they only have a single point in them. Well, if you have one element, you've got either A, B, or C. So you got A, B, and uh, C. Great. And how about no elements? Well, there's only one set which have, has no elements, which is the empty set. So we got this guy. So these are all the subsets. A, B, C, A, B, A, C, B, C, A, B, C, and the empty set. We don't have to worry about the order that we write things in. We're just looking for uh, subsets. Now the next relation I would like to talk about is equality. And equality really means uh, what you would expect it to do. I mean, a set A is equal to B. Uh, a is equal to B, and of course we write that as A equals B, if they have the same elements. Okay, so as a simple example, 1, 2, 3, 4 is equal to 2, 4, 1, 3, because, well, 1 is in here, 2 is in here, 3 is in here, 4 is in here, and this guy over here doesn't have any extra elements, so they are the same thing. But uh, a f nice fact we can use is uh, um, if A is a subset of B and B 
is a subset of A, then A is equal to B. The reason being, if A, everything in A is in B, and everything in B is in A, then they share the same elements. They're the same. So, for example, let's show that negative 3 and 3 is equal to the set x squared, where, uh, uh, excuse me, x, where x squared is equal to 9. Okay. So first, we'll show that negative 3, 3 is a subset of x such that x squared is equal to 9. Notice here we're starting with a roster on the left and a, a set builder on the right, and we have to compare these two. Well, to show that a, a, something in roster is inside of a, a set builder, we have to show that 3 squared is equal to 9 and negative 3 squared is equal to 9. We have to show that these two guys satisfy this property. Well, they do. You know, 3 squared is 9, negative 3 squared is also equal to 9. So, great. Second, we want to show that um, x such that uh, x squared is equal to 9 is a subset of uh, negative 3 and 3. Okay, well how do we do that? We do, th do this by solving x squared is equal to 9. So if x squared is equal to 9, then x squared minus 9 is equal to 0. I just subtracted 9 from each side. And then if I factor, I get x minus 3 times x plus 3 is equal to 0, which is factoring, uh, the difference of squares, in fact. And so then we can set each factor equal to 0. We get x minus 3 equal to 0, which implies that x is equal to 3, or x plus 3 is equal to 0, which implies that x is equal to negative 3. So uh, 3 and negative 3 are in 3, negative, th uh, negative 3, 3, so the, uh, you know, so x, such that x squared is equal to 9, is, uh, a, is a subset of negative 3, 3. So they're equal. Fantastic. Okay. Um, we can also write, you know, a is not equal to b if a and b, uh, you know, are not equal. Yeah, okay. So examples, we've already seen that odd numbers are not equal to prime numbers, and this is because, because odd numbers are not a subset of prime numbers, and prime numbers are not a subset of odd numbers. So, you know, it fails on two counts. But how about this? Uh, what else did I write? Uh, vowels are not equal to all letters, although vowels are indeed a subset of uh, letters. Letters are not a subset of vowels because, say, B is a letter but not a vowel. So they are not equal to each other. So you can either not be equal because, you know, you literally are not subsets of each other, or you can have somebody who's a subset but is strictly smaller than a bigger guy. Okay, um, and that's all I wanted to say here. Great.